I am both encouraged and my heart is burdened at the same time. A week ago, as we were sharing and praying, myself and some other pastors, something came into very clear focus in my mind and heart, and it's this, what the devil is up to right now in the American church. 1 Peter 5, 8, and 9 says, be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him. I want to talk to you today about three things that I clearly recognize the devil is doing in his church today. I'm Ed Skipper. This is a special edition of Truth Talk. My ministry is Heart of Revival, proclaiming the word and supporting spiritual leaders. The first thing I see the devil doing, and these are all D words, is to distract us. We are getting distracted from the Great Commission. Jesus said, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. You know, when my kids were young, we used to take them to this amusement center. They played a game in which they shot this laser gun at a machine that had these little circles that lit up. They lit up with a one, a two, or a three. And if you shot at that circle at the time it was lit up, you got that many points. What I learned after playing this game a while was that when I shot at ones, a two or three would light up and... While I was busy shooting the ones, I wouldn't be able to get any twos or threes, and my score would be really low. When we are distracted by lesser things, as in the coronavirus, which is taking a great deal of our attention, then we cannot focus on our great commission, which hasn't gone away. People are still lost, and disciples still need to be taught to obey Jesus. And individually, our focus on the coronavirus and feeding on the constant news can take us away from the joy that Jesus would have in him. Psalm 63, 5 and 6 says, My soul will be satisfied as with the richest of foods. With singing lips, my mouth will praise you. On my bed, I remember you. I think of you through the watches of the night. Nothing can satisfy like the Lord. So let's not fall into the devil's trap during this season of being distracted from the Great Commission and being distracted from spending time with Jesus. Now the second D word that I see the devil at work in during this coronavirus season is division. He is attempting to divide the church. There are people in the church who are very cautious because of this disease. They're staying like 12 feet away from people and they're, and they're maybe fearful. And there's other people who are shaking hands and hugging. There's some people who feel like the government is overstepping their bounds with their regulations about social distancing and masks and limiting the size of crowds. And other people are thankful that the government is putting these protections in place. Some people are saying that uh, you are paranoid and you are giving in to fear to the people with a different view. And other people would say, you're being reckless and you are, you are endangering life. Lives. So as I thought about this, the variety of opinions that we have in the church, and there's nothing wrong with a variety of opinions, there's only something wrong when it divides God's people because of those opinions. Reading Romans 14, I think this is very instructive for us. What was going on in that time was there was a disputable matter, apparently the matter of whether or not you should eat foods that are forbidden in the law. And Paul says this, and I want you to listen and apply it to our situation today with the variety of opinions about the coronavirus. Romans 14, accept the one whose faith is weak without quarreling over disputable matters. One person's faith allows them to eat anything, but another 
whose faith is weak eats only vegetables. The one who eats everything must not treat with contempt the one who does not, and the one who does not eat everything must not judge the one who does, for God has accepted them. Who are you to judge someone else's servant? To their own master, servants stand or fall, and they will stand, for the Lord is able to make them. I don't know about you, but I feel like my opinion about these matters is right about the coronavirus, about the government, and so forth. I feel like the opinions I have are the most God-honoring opinions that I can have. And you probably feel, whatever your opinion is, that you're right too. And that's okay. But I've got to guard my heart from a divisive spirit and words that would divide God's people. So here's how the devil is at work. He's distracting us from the main things. He's dividing his people. And the third D is that he is wanting to discourage us. The good news is God is good. He's in control and he knows best. Through this coronavirus season, he has not lost control. Even though you and I may be saying, I am sick of this. I'm tired of my normal life being so disrupted. So I think this, we can't go wrong when we treat this season as a time when God is disciplining his church. Hebrews 12, 7 says, endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you as sons. And later in that chapter, verses 10 and 11 of Hebrews 12, he says, Our fathers disciplined us for a little while as they thought best, but God disciplines us for our good that we may share in his holiness. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. If we will look at this season as a time in which God is shaping us so that we will share in his holiness and produce a harvest of righteousness and peace, I don't think we can go wrong with that perspective. By simply saying, God, you're good, you're in control, you're disciplining us, what do we need to learn? What are you teaching me? How is this shaking up of our lives that has happened meant to shape us? So I would encourage you to look at it that way, to not lose heart, but to be patient in affliction and to look to Jesus to see what you can learn through this challenging season. Now, if you have any constructive comments that you'd like to make on these issues, I would love to hear from you. And until next time, may you resist the devil's attempt to both uh, distract us from the main purpose, his, his attempt to divide us. May you resist that, and may you resist the temptation to be discouraged.